Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a timing belt on your 944 or 924S. So Alright guys, I'm going to be using this engine here on the stand so that way you can see everything that I'm going to be doing. And I already have my engine at top dead center and you can see my marks here in yellow. I made them yellow so that way you could see them a little bit better at home. Now keep in mind that the cam turns at half the speed of the crank. So just because you have the OT mark on the flywheel lined up doesn't mean that you're gonna have the mark here lined up on your cam. You always wanna make sure that your cam's lined up as well. So you may have the crank at OT but your mark for the cam is down here. What you need to do is turn your crank 360 more degrees and that's going to turn your cam 180 degrees to top dead center. So just something to keep in mind. Now, I don't have a bell housing on here since this is on a stand. So I have a dial indicator here and when it hits the very top, stroke and that indicator goes back down. See I'm still going up just a bit and then I went back down just a bit. Okay. That part there when it reaches the highest point right there that's going to be top dead center. So now that I have the engine at top dead center what I'm going to do here is go ahead and put a yellow dot down here like so and as long as that yellow dot is facing down I know that I'm at top dead center so I have the belt here and I'm going to go ahead and get it on so, all right, the first thing I've done here is put the belt around the crank sprocket down here at the bottom. Next, I'm gonna be installing the tensioner. And if you have an early car like this one, then you wanna pay close attention that you don't mix the tensioner up with the balance shaft tensioner, which has the flange on the front. You want the timing belt to have the flange on the rear. So, another thing to note is, early cars have a boss here that protrudes from the belt cover. And if you put a later oil pump in an early car then this boss here is going to sit flush with the cover and not give you enough space for the tensioner to rest on it and you're going to end up actually breaking this tensioner before you get it torqued down far enough so it's something that you need to pay close attention to you want to make sure that this boss is protruding from the cover like this one here before installing this if you have a later car, you're going to have this tensioner here, which people call the auto tensioner. And I'll do a video on tensioning with one of these later on. But for now, I'm going to take this one and install it like that. And you can see that when I push this all the way back, since that boss protrudes, I can easily spin it. So this is working as it should. Next, I'm going to take my belt and run it around both the tensioner and the water pump just like that. And most people will install their belts with their timing marks perfectly lined up. So that's what I'm going to do here and then I'm going to show you something. So I'm going to take this upper run of the belt and I'm going to run it around the cam sprocket here. So, all right, as you can see here, I've got my belt on now and you can see both my timing marks are lined up. And even though I pulled this belt tight around the upper run, you can see that there is still a lot of slack in this belt here. And that's gonna be an issue because if I go to turn the crank now, the cam isn't gonna follow until that slack is taken up. And I just wanna demonstrate that here. So pay close attention as I turn the crank and the slack comes out but it doesn't start turning the cam until all the slack is taken up. So there you go, right there. 
I just turned the crank. Now all the slack is gone and my cam hasn't moved at all. But now my crank is an entire tooth off down here. So that means if I were to drive this engine, it'd be driving around with the timing off. So let me show you how to get this slack out and still have your car perfectly timed. Let me set this back up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by turning the crank back to top dead center again. Sorry, right, now that I have the crank back at top dead center, I'm gonna go ahead and take the belt off the cam sprocket. And now I'm gonna take the cam sprocket and turn it forward about one tooth. And what that's gonna allow me to do is remove this slack and then everything will be perfectly in time when I move it back. Go here. See, I'm just about a tooth off, and I still have that slack there. Now, watch as I move it back. I'm perfectly in time now, and I have no more slack here. All right, now that I have the slack out of the belt, what I'm going to be doing is putting my washer and nut on the tensioner. snug it down here. So now that that's snugged up, I'm going to take my 27 millimeter wrench here and turn the tensioner counterclockwise so this is facing upwards. And keep in mind that every manufacturer requires you to use a belt gauge to make sure that you're not getting the belt too tight. A lot of cars you just have the crank, a tensioner, and a cam. And if you get the belt too tight, and you don't realize it, you could actually be bending down on the nose of the cam and in a few thousand miles, you can snap your cam right in two. So it's important on every car that you use a gauge if you're not sure how tight the belt should be. With that said, on our cars, the first thing that's going to break is our water pumps. As you can see, as I add more tension to this, the belt tries to straighten out here. So it goes from this to that. And as it's doing that, it's adding more and more stress to the water pump. And you can see here that I'm trying to turn this water pump and I can't do it. If your water pump is this tight, you're going to wear out the bearings and it's going to fail within a few thousand miles. So a good rule of thumb is a belt that's a little too loose is better than a belt that's a little too tight. If I were to run this right here, this water pump will fail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back this off just a little bit. And now it still takes a good bit of force to turn the water pump, but I can turn it. So that is the tension that I'm looking for there and I'm going to lock my tensioner down there using a 27 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket. The only time you need the thin wrench is when you're using a 17 millimeter wrench but if you use the socket this works just fine and there you go. So I now have the nut locked down on the tensioner and now's the time that you're going to be checking your tension with your belt gauge. And I'm not responsible if you screw any of this up. You need to check the tension to make sure it's correct. If you have an old gauge and you're not sure if it's calibrated anymore, remember it's better to have a belt that's a little too loose than too tight. And uh, just take your water pump and see if it turns. If you can't turn the water pump, then you need to back it off. We're talking just half a millimeter and you should be able to turn it like that and you should be good to go. So with that said, that's how you install a timing belt on a Porsche 944.
Now I've got an engine over here that I actually need to put the timing belt on. So come with me as I do that. All right, now I need to change the belt on this engine in the car. And now that you've seen it on the stand, you should have a better idea of how everything is going to go together. So you can see that I have my belt here and I've already got it around the crank sprocket down there. And I have my flywheel at top dead center. And I also have my dial indicator here telling me that I'm at top dead center. So what I'm gonna do first is put my tensioner on, make sure that you have the one that has the flange at the rear, and also make sure that your boss is protruding from the back of the belt cover. So now that I have the tensioner on, I'm going to run it along the water pump here. And then I'm gonna take my 32 millimeter wrench here and pull the cam forward about a tooth. It's a little too far. I'm going to put the belt around the sprocket there. And then move it back into position there. So my crank should have stayed at top dead center and all the slack is now removed from the belt there. So the next thing I need to do is take my washer and nut and snug down the tensioner. All right, once you have that snug down a little bit, you can then take your 27 millimeter wrench and rotate the tensioner counterclockwise. And I've got it too tight there. Right there is perfect. So that's why I'm going to lock it down. Again, if you're using a socket, you can use any 27 millimeter wrench or big adjustable. However, if you're going to use a 17 millimeter wrench, then you'll need a thin wrench. And now that's adjusted exactly where I like it. Again, at this point, this is when you'll want to check yours with your own gauge and follow the instructions with that and uh, again I'm not responsible if you mess any of this up it is very important that you follow directions on your gauge and make sure you have all the slack out and you don't over tighten the water pump here so I'm going to verify that my marks are on time and they are and the next move here is to take my 24 millimeter ratchet here and rotate the crank twice. Now the reason why I'm rotating the crank twice is because the cam only turns half as fast as the crank. So when I go 360 degrees here on the crank, I'm only going to have turned the cam 180 degrees meaning I need to turn the crank another 360 degrees to come back to top dead center and if you feel any binding as you're rotating this you want to make sure that everything is on time here I'm getting a little resistance because I have the spark plugs in but otherwise it's fine and if you're having issues turning it like you can only turn it so far before it springs it back then you need to make sure that you are in neutral because it could be your clutch that's springing you back so here we go that's two rotations of the crank bringing us back to top dead center here 
So alright guys, let me show you the marks. Here's the cam, top bit center mark. And then let me take you around here and show you the flywheel mark. You should be able to see it down in there in bright yellow. So, with the belt on, both marks are perfectly timed up. So this engine should run great. Now I'm going to be showing you how to install the belt guide and the roller here. So here's the belt guide and here are the two nuts that go on it. Once you have your belt tensioned properly, you can go ahead and slide it on. And then there's a locking nut at the top. And another nut at the bottom. And you'll need a 10 millimeter socket to install this. Go ahead and lay that down there. Now I'll grab my 10 millimeter socket. Next, we're going to be installing the roller. This here is the most common roller that you're going to find on water pumps. If you have the old style water pump that doesn't have the belt guide, then it will have a different type of roller. And it's recommended that you replace those water pumps. So it goes on the water pump just like that, if you can see down in there. This is it right here. And you'll tighten that down with a 17 millimeter. So here's the roller that I just installed and here's the belt guide. You want to make sure that this recessed part is at the bottom so the balance shaft belt can go across. And that's going to do it for this episode guys. That's how you install a timing belt. And I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time when we're going to be installing the balance shaft belt.